one thing that I want to show you is um, kind of the evolution of what's going on in the M&A world. And so um, when we talk about the multiples, as you know, we said the average uh, for these SDE type companies, which are owner operated, is running about 2.5 times across all industries. And, um, you know, some industries are higher, some are lower. But if it's an owner operated business, 2.5x is the average. Um, the new average for more sophisticated deals where there's an, a management team it's gone from 3.7 to 4.4 over the last 12 months. So we're seeing increases as the chart that I showed you, you know, when there's a, a hit in the economy, multiples dip and profits dip. So it's a fantastic time to buy. And as things start to come back, we don't know what the heck's gonna happen with the economy yet, right? It's far from open, but, um, but because a lot of tech companies and e-commerce companies have had three, four, five, seven, 10 X, growth just over the last year. Um, a lot of the folks I consult with, you know, they went from a $10 million company to a $40 million company just last year. So um, that's, you know, and, and they're being bought because there are a lot of funds right now that are still sitting on a ton of money. Just like I said, you know, a year ago, almost when I first started talking about this in this format. Um, so it's gone to 4.4 as the average multiple there. And PE has gone all the way up to 15.2. If you remember before it was at 11.5 at the end of 2019 and then throughout 2020 it crept up to about 12.9 and um, then on the NASDAQ side that stayed pretty constant at 24 times. So what's interesting about it is that the deal size average is between one and four across most industries. So those are still fantastic deals to pick up even if you don't have a particularly motivated seller, that multiple is so low, it's so easy to get your money back, particularly if you're buying with no money out of pocket. On these other deals that are EBITDA based, um, while the multiple has crept up, you still have all these motivated sellers. So there's still tremendous opportunity there. But the good news is, is that if you are flipping that and you're not flipping to PE, you just want to basically get it kind of, you know, rehab it for a uh, six to 12 months and then sell it, you can get a significantly higher flip than you could just a year ago, just last year. So we went from 3.7 um, during Q4 of 2019 to 4.4 uh, now. So that's a 19% increase. So that's kind of cool. And that shows you, you know, that what we're doing is really, really on the right track. And then the growth in private equity, if we do want to hang on to one of these and then flip them out to PE, or we want to put a couple of them together, well, it's up 22.5% from the 12.9 multiple that was there in um, the middle of 2020. And back at the end, Q4 of 2019, when it was 11.5, it's up 32.2%. So these areas that we like to play, remember, we like to buy in the blue and green box and then flip out to the... Uh, private equity box, the, the opportunity is only growing. And then there's not really been any change. It's been pretty constant in the um, in the PE ratio. So on either end, the bookends of these deals, the multiples are about the same, but they've gone up um, a good bit in the middle.